Hello and welcome to my channel, Hardware AI. And the topic of this video is... Anomalies, or specifically, anomaly detection for predictive maintenance. We are going to be using data from wire terminal built in accelerometer, perform neural network model inference and anomaly detection on device, and then send the data to new version of Blink IoT platform with plethora of new features, which was launched these few days and fully supports wire terminal. That's what. Now for the how part. Let's start with an example that might be more familiar. If you train a simple image recognition model to recognize, let's say, five different classes of animals – tiger, elephant, bear, snake, and giraffe – and then give it an image of a person, it will make a prediction to the best of its abilities and will possibly say it's an elephant. Cue the laughter of ordinary folks who do not really understand much about uh, internal works of this particular model and computer vision in general. Of course, the model didn't do anything wrong. It processed the image, calculated the features present in the, in the image, and then output classification result based on these features. Although, if we, plot, if we could plot these features from classes and cluster them, we would see that Ideally, the human image features are far from any other class cluster and thus represent an outlier, which of course could be just a very weird image of one of the animals, but in most cases it is much more likely that it's an object that model wasn't trained to recognize. For computer vision and speech recognition tasks, we often have background class to deal with this problem which basically represents anything that is not the classes of interest. In some situations, we really just want to want we really just want our model to be able to interpret all the data as normal or abnormal. It doesn't matter what are the exact characteristics of abnormal. They can be wildly different. The important thing is if abnormal class is detected, some measures need to be implemented. What I describe now is the premise of behind machine learning for predictive maintenance. We monitor the state of the device, uh, let's say air conditioner, water pump or other machinery with sensors, and based on a profile of no normal operation, trying to detect when something goes slightly wrong before it goes seriously wrong. For this project, I installed wire terminal on a water pump at our offices outside Petia, which has some plants and fish, and also some very angry birds. Then I collected two categories of samples, idle, here are the idle samples, and also the normal pump operation. Here are the various samples, each 20 second length of the normal pump operation. Uh, then I trained a simple model to recognize these two classes based on spectral features processing block output. For exact parameters of processing and learning blocks, you can have a look at the public version of the project that I shared, link in the video description. The only significant tweak I, well, I, I made from default parameters uh, for data processing was changing the filter type uh, from low to high and let's change it to high again yeah so I, I discovered it uh, experimental way that high pass filter works much better especially on the step of anomaly detection where we cluster our data um, distinguishing between uh, normal and idle classes proved to be really easy more challenging task was malfunction detection if we look at the features generated uh, after, after we apply the spectral features processing block, we can see that we actually have all our data nicely grouped into two clusters. If we look at uh, RMS, at every axis RMS, if we plot the, plot the data here, 
Um, so we have the normal operation here, normal operation samples here, and uh, in this corner, much closer to zero, because there is no vibration, we have the idle samples. To simulate malfunction, I would take the water pump out of the tank, uh, and that basically led to sound and vibration levels decreasing. Uh, let's have a look at malfunction sample. Okay, so looking at malfunction sample in the feature explorer, um, we, we use the same three axis, um, three axis RMS, and uh, we see that uh, the malfunction data, this new sample data, uh, is actually right here in between these two clusters. We look at Anomaly Explorer here, that's exactly what we see. Uh, this is the normal operation, this is the idle, and uh, our malfunction operation, which just has less vibration, and uh, it's, it's right in between these two clusters. So we can use this to our advantage by training a second network, second, second network that creates clusters around the data that uh, we have seen before and then compares the new incoming data uh, we, against these clusters. If the distance from one of these clusters to the new data point is too far, uh, then the sample is flagged as anomaly. After some trial and error, I found that uh, using the uh, RMS for each axis actually works just great. And uh, I put cluster count to two because essentially that's what we have in this particular data. Uh, and the minimum score before tagging is anomaly as 0 0.5. Uh, that will vary and uh, is very case specific and your data specific. Uh, one thing that helped to increase the accuracy was fixing wire terminal on the water pump firmly, at least with the glue. You can actually use screws for real application, but before firmly, before fixing firmly, wire terminal was wobbling randomly, which introduced too much noise into normal operation samples, so it was easy to confuse normal operation and the anomaly. After, um, after model is trained and tested, uh, we could use a live classification mode and classify one of the samples. Uh, and then after that, uh, oh, actually we could use modal testing to see the results for multiple samples. Um, yeah, for example, you see here is definitely the normal operation, most of the samples. Uh, in modal testing, you can classify multiple samples at the same time, so you could do classify all and then we'll classify the three samples. First one is idle, second one is actually normal, and the third one is the malfunction or anomaly. So, model works reasonably good for now. And uh, choose Arduino library. Actually, as you see, there are some new interesting things have been added here, like Tensor RT library, which could be really useful, and Linux boards here. Um, okay, then press build. We extract the download library and uh, we place it into your Arduino sketch folder here. Libraries. This one called EIY Anomaly Detection. Then you open Arduino ID. If you're on Windows, make sure that's Arduino 1.19. Otherwise, you would get an error where it says that the during compi compilation stage, during the linking stage, uh, the linker comment is too long. So what we'll do is we actually will open the example called Y Anomaly Detection Infer Inferencing, and we'll open Nano BLE 33 cents accelerometer, and we're just going to quickly change uh, this. Uh, specifically, what we're going to change is uh, we're going to change the accelerometer model uh, to match the accelerometer used in uh, in Y terminal, and thus we're also going to change some accelerometer related code, and we're going to add a little bit uh, in the end that uses TFT screen and makes it light up red when anomaly is detected, when anomaly score is higher than the set threshold for anomaly, which is 0 0.5 as you remember. Okay, I'm going to quickly make these changes. Uh, 
Okie dokie, and then let's open the serial monitor. And what do we see here? Okay. Well, it's idle, so that's uh, that's actually pretty. Uh, that's right. Um, idle operation, and then if it's just lying down like that on the on on the table, uh, we get uh, anomaly score lower than our anomaly threshold. And let's try lifting it up. And uh, okay, there we go. So if I do that we get much higher anomaly score um, and despite it says normal operation because there is vibration now uh, we have higher anomaly score than we would get during normal operation but we cannot really test here um, so we'll have to go outside and try it on the actual water pump let's see how it goes Well, okay, so it works, but it's not going to work in a real application because there is no person to constantly watch over wire terminal like that if, if, if there is anomaly detected on the screen or not. So to make this demo useful, we are going to employ brand new release of Blink IoT platform. The new version of Blink includes such such features as web dashboard to monitor the devices if you remember blink was mostly mobile application so now is web dashboard and there is a new approach to model template to device template creation there is also blink inject which is a wi-fi manager that allows you to configure uh, your device's credentials through a convenient web interface uh, and there are some features that we are not going to use today, which is the uh, the all new kinds of automations and uh, voice assistants and much more. But it does sound very useful. So I'll try it next time. Uh, by the time this video is published, all these features should be available for general public. Uh, go to blink.cloud and uh, then you will need to either register a new account or log into an existing one. The next step for you is going to be uh, creating a new template. Um, templates are digital models of the device that uh, can be inherited by, multiples de by multiple devices with similar functionality. The power of templates is, an, is that uh, when you update the template, you instantly going to update all of the devices that are created from the template. Um, so I already have wire template, but just for the purpose of demonstrating, let's create another one. Uh, I'm going to call it test. Um, we're going to choose the um, Arduino board. Uh, let's, ch uh, let's choose Arduino Uno and connection tab Wi-Fi. Uh, description, you can just leave it empty. Done. Okay, so what we have here uh, is very important thing that we will use later in the code is firmware configuration where we have template ID and device's name uh, but then we also have the data streams and web dashboards. I will uh, make screenshots and place them in the accompanying article, populate the data streams tab and also web dashboard tab as you, see, you can see right now on my screen or uh, or as you see in screenshot in the accompanying article and after that save the changes. Let's have another look. Uh, there is metadata, metadata. This is additional data about devices you want to configure. Uh, then there is data streams, which is an entity to define the data that flows in and out of the device. Overall, it's very similar to what we had before with earlier versions of Blink as virtual pins. Uh, then we have events, which we're not using currently. Uh, and then there is a web dashboard and mobile dashboard. Uh, this is a set of widgets we'll have in our web application and then mobile obviously for mobile application. Uh, all right, so after that we can create a new device. Create new device. Well, I'm actually going to choose the Y template which I created before and I'm going to name device YO. Okay, so you see I have Y1 
and wire. Both of them are currently offline. Now, the web interface is ready to receive the data from the device. Uh, download the example sketch from Seed Y Terminal Example Sketches repository. Okay, and uh, this is this is this is the sketch for Blink. Uh, basically, if you look at the sketches folder here, normally Blink, uh, we see that apart from the main sketch file, uh, we also have uh, multiple files that uh, multiple helper files that. Uh, that manage the connection to Blink Cloud and also the Wi-Fi, the Wi-Fi setup. In the main sketch, all the data, data collection, data processing, and then uh, the inference is put in the separate function, which is called run inference. As you see, this is very familiar co code. But then what's different is that we add all the uh, all the variables, all the variables and the code needed for connecting to Blink Cloud. Namely, really important part is the template ID and device's name again. Uh, then we also have this Blink Agent uh, .h file header file. Um, then, actually, the setup function is very similar to what we had before. I just added the Blink Agent begin and I used the timer from Blink Agent uh, and I set it to interval of one second. Uh, so we, 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 we call the send data function every second. Uh, so what happens is that in, uh, in the loop we have the run inference first and then uh, Blink Agent run. So, after you upload uh, the code to Y Terminal, it will create the hotspot which you can connect to with your phone. Upon connection, you will be automatically redirected to a, a web page, uh, and there you will be able to fill in the credentials, namely it's, uh, your Wi Fi password and SSID, and also your OS token for this particular device, which you can get in Device Info OS Token tab and then you'll copy and paste. After that, you press on save the config um, and the device will uh, automatically connect to Wi-Fi network like this. Uh, the configuration data is saved in the device's memory, so you only need to do it once and then every time, every next time, uh, the device will be switched on, it will automatically connect to Wi-Fi and Blink Cloud. Um, so now we can see that device is online and we do see the inference result as idle here and the noise level and uh, not, light level is really low, but I know why. Let's try it in this way now. So let's go outside to the fish and bird garden and then check how it actually works. Obviously, same approach can be applied to detecting irregularities in other machinery operation. We can use accelerometer for pretty much everything with moving parts. Since these produce vibrations, we can measure. If device emits audible sounds, we can use microphone too. A combination of sensors might even work better. Are there any other good application scenarios where predictive maintenance can be used. Write your ideas in the comment section below the video. I hope this video and the article were useful for you and I'll see you next time in another video of TinyML series.